So yeah, I'll, I'll go first before um, I let my one speak. I just thought it was worthwhile getting everybody together, given what has happened this last week. Um, from having only two cases in the whole of 2020 to now sort of being well into double figures has been quite alarming for everybody. And ultimately, we stood down till Friday. And, and I think what's going to happen in the process, so everybody's aware of it, we'll come in Friday, we'll get PCR tested again. We'll then have to wait for a set of results. Then we'll wait for the RFL to reconvene, uh, which I think will take place over the weekend in conjunction with Public Health England, and they'll decide whether we can um, come back into work again. Now, at the minute, you know, fingers crossed, we expect to be back in on Monday, but a lot of it will be determined by our results again on, on Friday. Um, as you've probably seen since we came back in January, we've been as stringent as ever, probably on everybody's case, um, more so than we were last year. But we find ourselves now in double figures and, and I thought it was really important that Marwan spoke to you, uh, but also for us to, to see each other face to face, albeit very fleetingly, um, just to let people know that if you need anything at all, um, please pick up the phone, myself, Marwan, Nige, Jace, um, we'll help you wherever we can. And if we can't help you, we'll find someone who will. So don't feel like these next couple of days, you have to struggle through this. Um, Hopefully we'll get back on Monday and we can crack on. So, as Kev said, I think I think it's really important that the, the players see this. Um, and the reason for that is that um, the majority of cases that we've had have all been in players. So we've got currently 11 positive cases, one staff member and the rest are all players. So if you're a player who's watching this now, um, once we've sent out the video, if you can pass it on to everybody else and make sure everyone sees it, because it's that's the main target uh, group that I want to be seeing this video. Um, in terms of the cases that we currently have, um, we do have um, some players who are quite unwell with COVID at the moment. Um, so they're well enough to stay at home, but they're not very well. Um, and the, um, we're hopeful that everyone makes a quick and swift and full recovery. However, we've got to be um, kind of prepared for the fact that some may not make a full recovery. We know that COVID affects the lungs um, and... <laughs> And those who have got particularly bad symptoms, it can cause problems like medium to long term. Um, so there's a potential consequence to you know the, this season in terms of performance um, and potentially further than that as well. So just in terms of putting it on the radar of how how serious this is, um, there are potential kind of um, negative impacts on performance um, in the medium to long term. Um, that, that we're experiencing that at the moment. Um, in terms of where we're up to from, from this past week, so uh, myself, Kev, Sarah, Sue, uh, Jason, uh, I've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes in terms of reporting. Um, I've been speaking a lot to Public Health England this week about where we're up to. Um, and I wanted to be really honest with you all in terms of um, the current status, uh, because Public Health England's main role is to ensure the safety of the community. Um, we have from the RFL, we've got particular um, guidelines that we, we, we can uh, work towards that make us operate in a way that's slightly different to uh, your standard Joe Boggs public. But it gets to a point where Public Health England are, um, have, are responsible for making sure the community is safe. The big distinguishing factor is that if we can pinpoint cases to one particular source. So one person, let's say, gets it from yeah, someone they yeah, live with right. um, and then brings it to the club and then that bubble then get it. That's less worrying than if we have multiple cases that aren't linked. And um, the things that have saved us from that are our stringent protocols we put in place. So they, they are the close contact tracing we're doing, the matrix and the, and the tracing that we're doing the daily lateral flow testing that we've been doing in this past uh, week, 10 days. It's the daily app as well, um, reporting of symptoms, and it's the setup we've had at, at Kirkstall um, in terms of the PPE that we're using, um, the one-way systems and adhering to the rules. All that together is what at the moment is keeping us out of having to all go into isolation. So uh, following that guidance and the things we've put in place, Things like doing your app every day, if you have symptoms, reporting them. Um, 
and doing your lateral flow testing are all really key. I wanted to talk a bit about lateral flow testing. So um, from speaking to a lot of the so for a lot of a lot of you, um, I think there's a misunderstanding about what lateral flow testing is and what it is not. So there are two types of tests for COVID. There's a PCR test, which is one we used to do, which is when they would come and they'd do a swab of the nose and of the throat. It's the one we did on Monday. That's a very specific, very accurate test for COVID. And if you have symptoms and you do that test and it's positive, then you've got COVID. The lateral flow testing is the one that you're doing at home yourself, and it's not in replace of a PCR test. If it's negative, it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have COVID. Um, so what that you might say, well, why are we doing it? And the reason we're doing it is because we can, it's, we can do it, at, we can do a lot of people can do tests themselves. It's very easy to do, and we can pick up 50% more than what we could have done if we weren't doing this. this. That's, so that's why it's been rolled out. In terms of the cases that we've had, if, it's, if it shows up positive, Oh. And you have to get a PCR test to confirm it. And all the cases we've had so nah, far, nah. those people who've shown lateral flow positive, the PCR has become positive as well. So what it isn't is that if you have symptoms and you'd have a negative lateral flow test, that does not mean that you're okay. And I think that's probably a misconception I think some people have had that you might have had a runny nose or a cough or a tickly throat or things that are kind of borderline COVID, um, negative lateral flow, and then not reported those symptoms acted upon them. So if I can be really clear, if you have any symptoms, then they need to get reported to me, they need to get put onto the app. And if you have any symptoms at all, you're gonna have a PCR test, which is the one, the NHS one, the drive-through one, where you go through the website, which I share with you, um, and you get it done through the NHS. And that's the one with the, the one where someone takes the swab of the, the nose and the throat. What have what doing lateral flow, and this is something that public health thing were really keen for me to stress is it doing that and having a negative lateral flow shouldn't in any way affect our behavior, which means that just because you've got a negative lateral flow test doesn't mean that somehow the rules are more relaxed for you um, or us that have a lot of negative lateral flow. The rules of um, isolation and um, lockdown apply to everybody, regardless of your lateral flow. And the reason for that, as I said before, is because it doesn't necessarily mean you don't have COVID. It just it just opportunistically picks up if you do, but don't have symptoms. One of the questions I got asked uh, by, by, by someone this week was about antibody testing and that whether that's something that we're doing. Um, so we're not doing antibody testing. Antibody testing hasn't been, um, it's, it's not been rolled out in the NHS. Um, I've been asked about whether that's something we can access privately um, about to so see whether you've had the virus and whether that in, has an influence on um, your behavior. Um, the reason we're not doing it is because it's not accessible to us, but also even if you were tested and you showed that you previously had COVID and have antibodies to COVID, that doesn't change anything in terms of your behavior. So you still have to um, uh, operate under lockdown measures as everybody else, uh, because we don't know just because you have antibodies that you, number one, can't get COVID again, but more importantly, you can't pass on COVID to somebody else. So um, antibody testing is something that we're not doing uh, for those reasons. Um, so the, the key things from a behavior point of view I want to reinforce is that we all st strictly stick to the lockdown. And what that means is that we don't leave our house unless it's absolutely essential. So going to get food um, or any um, emergency medical care or anything else that's been allowed. Um, we shouldn't be leaving the house or exercise. We shouldn't be leaving the house to meet people um, or to socialize or anything like that. And people shouldn't be coming to our house that aren't within our bubble. Clearly, if you live alone or um, not with many people, then that can cause issues with loneliness. Um, and there's lots of things in the media about mental health and things um, at the moment. So if, you've, if, if that affects you, then don't hesitate to reach out to either myself or Nigel and, and we can talk things through and give you all the support that you need. Um, the last, last, point, last couple of points I wanted to stress was that when we do get back into Kirkstall and we are training again, it's really important that we're all adhering to the measures that we've said. So that means washing your hands at every opportunity. It means wearing a mask indoors at all times, unless we've said you can't. Um, it means uh, maintaining social distance, using the one-way system we have in Kirkstall. Um, that applies to staff and, and to players as, as well. The last point I wanted to make finally before I open up to questions is that 
this is a, where we are now is a really key point in what could define the rest of our season. Um, as I say, I, I'm not laying it on thick by saying that we were in, on the brink of being having to isolate as a whole club uh, for the next 10 days this week. Um, and what I don't want to happen is that we relax and then we can get more cases and then that does happen an impact on the rest of our season and what we can do in preparation in pre-season. So it's, it's, it's painful now, but I think this is a real turning point. And we, if we're smart with it all and we do things as we should be doing, then we can really kind of get on top of this. Um, so I think it's an opportunity for us to, to kind of to turn it around.